A warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. We had uh, talked about the problem of uh, analog to digital conversion and we had ident identified three steps sampling, quantization and uh, source coding. We had discussed sampling to some extent and we had identified the problem with quantization that is we convert a continuous random variable to a discrete random variable such that the loss of information or the mean squared error. We had identified that the problem of quantization mainly reduces to minimizing this mean squared error j quantified by the expected value of so this should be actually mathematical j quantified by this. So now when x is in the set ai. So the problem is that uh, we have to find a representation x hat equals b i when x is in the set a i such that this is minimized. So, the quantization problem can be written as the expectation over x. So, this, so let me clarify one thing since x hat equals b i when x is in a i is a stick map from x to x hat, x is the only random variable involved and x hat is a function of x. So, this expectation will be over x hat fine. So, this expectation will be over x hat. So, now we can write this expectation as this, this is a simple equality or since, so this A, let me call this A, this equality A. the fact that x equal x hat equals b i when x is in a i or if we consider only x equals a i then or x is in a i then x hat will always equal to b i and hence we can replace this or hence we can break this integration into summation or a sum of integrations and write this. Now, the quantization problem reduces to choosing the sets, choosing the sets a i or equivalently the intervals a i to a i plus 1 and b i's that minimize j. So, the problem reduces to choosing these sets and so let me give a formal name. So, these are called decision boundaries and b i's are called reconstruction levels. AIs are called decision boundaries and BIs are con reconstruction levels and this is done, but practically it is not possible to solve for AI and BI simultaneously or simultaneously minimize AIs and BIs. So, what we do is we solve this problem of quantization iteratively that is we fix the decision regions and solve for b i's the that is the reconstruction points and we fix the reconstruction points and we solve for the decision regions. By doing this iteratively we can uh, reduce the overall cost function to a minimum 
and uh, there are guarantees that show that uh, this indeed is the global minimum, but uh, that is not what uh, we will cover in this course, our focus is on simulation and not uh, that much on theory, we will just cover the basic theory that is required to do that simulation. So, now or fixed decision regions. So, let me add So, this is a sum of these terms, this is a summation, this summation over i over i is a summation of a i x minus b i square f x x d x. So, this integral, this is non-negative, this is non-negative and hence this integral is non-negative. So, this is a sum of non-negative terms and a sum of non-negative terms is minimized when each of those terms will be minimized. So, given a i is the sum will be minimized when each of the integrals is minimized or letting j i equal a i x minus p i whole square f x x d x. When we have this, then naturally want to choose b i that minimizes j i, we want to choose b i that minimizes a i. So, for that differentiating j i, well, we get integral over a i x minus b i minus f x x d x equals 0 or integral over a i x minus p i f x x d x equals 0 or integral x a i f x x sorry this should be lower case x everywhere ok anyway no this should be lower case x here. Uh, uh, this, this, this should be lower case x, my bad, lower case x and x minus p i, x minus p i, x f x x d x minus b i, a i f x x d x equals 0 or b i so, this again should be lower case x. So, b i is the, the centroid of a i the with respect to the p d f of x, this is the centroid of a i with respect to the p d f of x. And similarly, when b i is fixed, this is a sum of non-negative terms minimized when each term is minimized. Now, for fixed pi, this will be minimized when ai consists of points that are nearest to bi or as we define that for all x such that x minus b i is less than or equal to x minus b j for all j not equal to i. So, any point within the codomain of x that satisfies this property that uh, it is closer to b i than so, let me write it this way, this is true for all x 
lower case x lower case x that are closer to b i to any other representation level. So, in short B i's are the centroids of chosen decision sets, A i's are the sets of points, points that are physically closest to the corresponding reconstruction levels. levels. So, this is how we iteratively decide the reconstruction levels and decision regions. So, that said, we can extend this idea to a vector. So, if we want to represent realizations of a continuous random vector, so instead of a scalar, if we have a vector, then naturally this is a difference, this should be a norm. So, actually I will just edit this to write this properly. So, this gets deleted and everything is So, we do this and uh, so continuous random using a finite set of vectors given by x hat equals b i, all of these are vectors. vectors. So, this is the problem and we can solve this problem in a manner similar to the case for scalar quantization. This is called the Lloyd Max quantizer. So, let me use a different color here. The quantizer that solves this problem is called the Lloyd Max. This is the Lloyd Max quantizer and uh, this is for the vector quantization. So, for given data, we arbitrarily choose k cluster centers, iterate. So, I should this and the iteration should be other way around. The iteration here should be the other way around that is given the choose cluster centers, find the decision boundaries or find the containing sets and do this. And the only difference here is that this is, so let me call this equation as A again. So, for given data or for without any distribution or without prior distribution known distribution A becomes B i equals x i or becomes the A becomes the sample mean of the corresponding cluster. 
So, for given data without any distribution, B A becomes a sample mean of the given cluster. So, at each we start with an arbitrary, we start by choosing k arbitrary cluster centers and then we iterate by first updating the decision regions closest to those cluster centers and then choosing the cluster centers as uh, the sample means of those clusters. So, this is called the, this is called the k means algorithm, we call the k means or the c means or the k nearest neighbors algorithm which is a quite popular machine learning algorithm. So, this is called the k means algorithm and we will try to implement this in MATLAB. So, let us open MATLAB. So, actually instead of I had started defining a function, but uh, instead of defining a function let me save this as a k means example. K means k means example and uh, let me generate. So, data x is k means example. So, x is the data matrix. So, let me say I generate random data. So, random data it is uh, hard. So, let me say or let us first generate random data. So, let us first generate random data that comes from clusters or random data that uh, is naturally clustered. So, so example, let us first consider a simple scalar example with Gaussian points around 1, 2, 4. So, 4 clusters, we start with 4 clusters and we start with Gaussian distributed points around from 1 to 4. So, x I define as random So, random say let me start with n points. So, 10,000 points, say 10,000 points plus I say rand i 4 this. So, 10,000 points between this and run. So, let me quickly histogram of x. So, if I do this, so actually these are the cluster centers are not well separated enough. So, maybe if I do this, now the cluster centers will be well separated and I will get four distinct. So, we get four distinct Gaussians around 10, 20, 30 and 40. So, this is the data. We get four distinct Gaussians around 10, 20, 30 and 40. If you feel that these are too close, let us make this 5, save, run and so now these are still four distinct Gaussians well overlapping with each other or overlapping with each other. So, now the question is that we have the data. So, once we have the data, now we want to cluster it. So, again I know here a priori that uh, there are four clusters. So, let us set k equals 4. So, this is the number of clusters. This is the number of clusters. Now, let us start the k-means algorithm. So, what is the k-means algorithm? The k-means algorithm says that initialize 
arbitrarily choose k cluster centers with this and iterate this. So, this k means algorithm or the k means algorithm earlier the algorithm on the previous slide does not talk about uh, stopping criterion, but eventually we have to stop it as well. So, since since we are trying to minimize the MSC, we stop when the MSC stops changing, we stop when the MSC stops changing or when the change in MSC from one iteration to the next is less than 1 percent. When the change in MSC is from one iteration to the next is 1 percent. So, this and so k equals 4. Now, let us first initialize. So, initialization. So, we will initialize this. So, say let us fix cluster centers. So, let us generate 4 random numbers. So, pick up random samples x. So, for c1 equals 1 to k and i equals rand i n. So, pick one sample and b i equals or b c 1 equals x i. Naturally, this could have been done much simply by using vectors, but this is a simplified notion or I can actually do one thing, place this with this and this can be done in one step. So, we save the definition of the variable i and now what I get is I get b that includes 4 random samples from x. So, from 4 randomly chosen samples from x are included in b that is the first step. So, initialization is done. Now, let us fix the stopping let us fix the stopping criterion. So, let me say that MSC old is 10,000, MSC new is say 10 times MSC old is 10 times the variance of x, 100 times the variance of x, new equals variance of x, 10 times the variance of x. So, this, so del MSC equals MSC old minus new absolute value of this divided by So, 
So, this is the kind of the fractional change in MSC. So, this gives the fractional change in MSC. MSC. And while the fractional change in MSC is greater than 1 percent, while the fractional change in MSC is greater than 1 percent, do the or run the k means iterations. So, this, so the two steps are calculate the clusters, 1 calculate the clusters and 2 update the cluster centers. So, first since we have a initial set of clusters, we will calculate the clusters. So, for C 1, 1 to n, for C 2 equals 1 to k, d C 2 equals absolute value of x, the distance between C 1 minus this and C 1. Then I use the min function to value and index equals min of d label c1 equals. So, this actually generates a label. So, this actually puts that into a cluster with the corresponding label fine. So, this is uh, where we cluster the points into different sections and now we compute the sample averages. So, for the second step we compute the sample averages. So, say sums equals 0 or zeros. So, second step is sums and counts. This for C 1 equals 1 to n and or let me label this calculate the distance the C two at C two at cluster center. pick up so the sums and counts will become apparent so sums so so for now each entry of x we have a label associated with it so each entry of x now has a label associated with it and uh, now we want to calculate the cluster centers of corresponding to those labels. So, first now what we do is we take up each entry and sums equals add this plus add count C 1 and we increment the count of the corresponding label by 1. This said we run this, but since we have not introduced a stopping criterion we are stuck because if we try to run this now this will be stuck in an infinite loop. So, you see that uh, anyway we have uh, the counts and the sums. So, what we do is b I define as sums dot slash 
counts. So, I update B which is a quotient or which is the individual division of sums and counts. So, this gives sample mean of each, this gives the sample mean of each cluster and then once I get the sample mean of each cluster, I repeat the process but uh, meanwhile I need to update the MSC. So, MSC old is equal to MSC new. So, the new MSC old is the old MSC new which makes sense. So, So, x hat equals b label gives you the entries of b. So, this and new equals variance of x minus x hat gives the variance of x minus x hat and finally, we calculate del MSC again. Let me show this and this and we see that uh, del MSC is updated each time. So, this and MSC new minus MSC old and this converges or uh, we get x hats as the nearest points of. So, this runs for how many times? So, del MSC say, let me say that DMSC space this and DMSC is. So, I define this what this will do is this will have uh, as a function of the number of iterations and you see that DMSC is a length 7 vector and so DMSC you can see decreases like this or actually let me start off with not saving the first DMSC because that fixed at 90 percent. So, so, length 14 and we can do clear all flows all here at the start. We can do clear all flows all here and run this again. DMSC DMSC I define as a blank. DMSC I define like this and see that DMSC is length 5. But uh, say I want to reduce this further. I want to make this two orders of magnitude smaller. Can I do this? Yes, it can be done. The DMSC, so now instead of uh, 5 iterations, it requires 7 iterations, but it is doable. So, and this decreases linearly. So, maybe if I say that 10 to power minus 6, is it doable? So, it uh, del MSC goes to 0 quite quickly and 7 iterations it goes to 10 to minus 6, 10 to minus 5. So, I run this again. I can again within 7 iterations this goes as low as 10 to minus 6 or 0 is actually an unreliable metric, but uh, so we get very good uh, cluster centers or very good reconstruction using 
the k means algorithm so we have seen the behavior of the msc as the function of the number of iterations so that is all about quantization that we will discuss here we will continue in the next lecture with the uniform quantization and source coding thank you Thank you.